Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. You'll notice that this video is going to be a little bit different than my usual tutorials. I decided to upload part of last week's Fusion 360 online class I teach, where we tackle a car rim design. This was a request I had received after modeling a tire the previous week. So with these classes, I basically go wherever the students want to go. If someone is stuck on a particular design, we'll bring it in and help the student get unstuck. In this session, I particularly enjoy how we start exploring a few different options. And even though we encounter some errors along the way, we're able to solve them one by one and learn a few things along the way. Now for the car enthusiast out there, I want to say that I wasn't focused on reproducing an accurate depiction of a wheel not quite my area of expertise, but rather I wanted to show a technique that you can use to get there. All right, sit back and enjoy. And if you decide you're interested in joining my weekly Fusion 360 online class, I'll leave a special promotion link below. So after we did the tire last week, um, uh, Kayvon requested that we do rims this week. So we'll go, uh, we'll go into that today. So <laughs> see the hole you got us into Trevor? Here an hour into rims, and we'll soon we'll be designing the rest of the car here. It's a good job. I'm a long way away. <laughs> um, so okay, we'll uh, let me pull up Fusion here. Okay, so here's so I I was actually let me show first. This is um, the tire we did last week. Um, you can see uh, only sort of half of the treads here are. Are split but um, last week we did the design approach that we took on the tire here um, so here it is and then today we're going to look at making this so there's a bunch of different ways you can tackle sort of a, a rim design there's so many designs and I was looking at some approaches online and it's it's kind of one of those projects I mean you, you can teach a whole fusion 360 course on just all the different techniques <laughs> that you can do here um, and I, I was originally thinking of doing uh, going into sculpting first, because there's some really neat approaches you can do there with uh, with sculpting the rim, especially like some like organic looking rims. Um, but I came across this technique here, and I thought, you know, this one's um, this one's actually a, a pretty good one because it's it's got a, a technique here that I thought would be really useful that I can show. And uh, I forgot the the YouTube channel um because i was just it was one of those where you know where you guys um like there's a bunch of channels out there where the design is sort of they do like a speed build and they just oh not really it wasn't a speed build more it was just like it was just music and the guy was just designing stuff and sometimes i just like to play those and um you know and it's just music no one's really talking and uh they can be hard to follow if you're new with Fusion because they don't they're not really telling you like go here and choose this tool. There's this music in the background and they're designing away. Um, but once you kind of, you know, you get to a certain level in Fusion, you kind of, you know, you'll, you'll do what I do where you're just like you'll speed it to 2x speed and then you'll just like watch them design and then figure out like, you know, why, why would you go that way? Or like, oh, that's a, that's a neat approach you took there, you know. Um, so you know, they can, they can be fun to watch. And sometimes they just open up your eyes to like, oh, I never thought of using that type of technique. So I was kind of, um, I had a, an idea of what I wanted to do, but I said, let me just see what else is um, out there. And I saw this technique and then so sort of the background, how I got to this design here that I want to show. So um, taking a look at this and here, so don't worry about the dimensions or anything. I just kind of went with whatever um and i just wanted to kind of really just focus on the 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 technique here and one um one sort of design technique and principle i thought would be useful in showing so just taking a look at this i guess if we can get some some feedback like what's you know what's what's your brain saying right now if you were to kind of think of a, an approach to make something like this what kind of tools and what sort of strategy would you be doing Sweet. The first thing is interesting because you've got seven spokes, which is almost never done. Um, it's an interesting number. And then you've got six studs for the uh, to hold it on, which is also a, an unusual <laughs> number. <laughs> Not that that matters, but it's the first thing that hit my eye. Ah, well, let's see. Let's, I let's see eight spokes. It doesn't, look, eight. Like a real, it doesn't look like a real That's wheel. A three, four, five, six. What was that, Larry? It doesn't look like a real oh. wheel. 
It doesn't look real. Okay. No, it right. It doesn't have enough uh, edge for the bead, and um, they're usually not tapered like this. They're usually like there has to be a smaller diameter ledge in it to get the tire on. Yeah, I, I figured uh, I'd get some, that some feedback from the mechanics and and how this doesn't comply. That doesn't really matter. I'm more interested to see how you did the spokes. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Nope. They're right. Sorry. Yeah. And it looks person. like a. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. A mini light sweep. Like a mini light. sweep. Yeah, it looks like a sweep, or maybe a loft would do that as well. Mm -hmm. That would be my first uh, thought. A sweep or a loft? Okay. Yeah, yep. loft like yeah. A you know, I have a different shape at the bottom and a different shape at the top, and then you know, uh, loft between loft them. between them probably. Okay, I was gonna hide my design history, but whatever, I'll leave it. <laughs> I forgot to hide it. Oh, I didn't even look at it. I, I didn't either. Right, looking. I, 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 I am. <laughs> okay. It's almost too small to see. Okay, good. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a sweep and a loft. Uh, what else? What are you guys thinking? Anything else? Any other approach you would take on something like this? I was going to just suggest one detail, like a 3D sketch to maybe connect the center, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where the holes are and the outer rim. And then, you know, then probably do a loft or, or maybe just extrude and then maybe a fillet. It's hard to see the exact contour, but that's what struck me. But I like what everyone else said, too. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Okay, so let me... Let me go through the approach I took and feel free to jump in with any questions or comments. Okay, so first thing we're gonna start with is a sketch here. And let's see, yeah, so I'm gonna sketch on the ZX plane here. Um, so our front plane. And the way I approach this, I'm gonna start with a line, so I'll for a line and I'll draw a line straight out here. I believe I did, uh, trying to remember, yeah, so 90 millimeters here. I'm going to take that and hit X to make it a construction line. Um, and actually, I want to, I'd rather look at this uh, up and down, so I'm just going to flip my view cube to look at it this way. Okay, and at this point, what I like to do is I'll just create a basic profile that I'm going to use to make this um, sort of this section here of the rim. Um, now. This was actually one of the more simple ones I've seen. I don't know uh, as far as the different profiles for this, but a few of them I looked at looked quite a bit different than this. So I don't know if there's sort of one standard. Um, but anyway, I'll just, uh, it doesn't really matter. Like once you kind of get the idea here, you can make it any shape you want. So what I did here is I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to just go ahead and start here at the top of this. And so I'll just come in and draw the basic shape of the profile. And, you know, at this point, you want to get close to the dimensions you're going to be putting in, but you don't have to worry about being so precise. So it's basically going to be something like this uh, angle, go up, uh, and then I'm going to go down and then come across like this. So now I've got that basic shape there. Uh, I'm going to come in with some dimensions. So here, I'll put a dimension here for 50. Uh, and then this one, I did six. Uh, seven here and again these aren't really big I just made it so that visually it kind of looked like it was right and I won't worry too much about dimensions for the rest of, of this um, like I said I want to focus mainly on the approach so here I'm going to dimension between these two make that 15 um, and then I'm going to dimension from this point here to the bottom here and I'll make that 95. So just enough here just to like lock this in. All right, now that I've got half of it, I'm gonna mirror it to the other side. Just double click, go to create mirror, got my mirror tool here. I'm just gonna double click to select this chain here and then this will be my mirror line. And I'll click okay. Now I've got this. So finish sketch, and then I'm gonna take this and do, go to uh, do a revolve. So create revolve. And it automatically now it will select your profile. So all you have to tell it is the axis you want to revolve around. So I'll click that, click OK. And that gets me this shape here. 
So, all right, straightforward, um, that part. And now what I'm going to do, so I'm looking at it from a top view here, is I'm going to create a sketch um, here on the, so I'm looking from the top. So now I'm going to go on the XY plane here. And here I'll go ahead and create a circle in the center. Uh, and there we go. So C for a circle. I'm going to go with, uh, again, just visually, I went with 60 millimeters here for um, the circle. And then I'm going to create another circle. Actually, let me move the dimension here so it's out the way. Zoom in. Create another circle here. I went with, say, five millimeters uh, for the holes. So I'm going to go with here. And so I want to take this and lock it so that it's constrained to this uh, center here. So I'll do a vertical constraint between that center of the circle and my origin here. And I'll do a dimension from these two. And I did, uh, let's say I did 10 millimeters. All right. And then I'm going to take this and just do a circular pattern. So this part here is all straightforward. I'm just going to get to a place where we can get to that loft part I want to show. Um, so, okay, I'll do six holes. Do five, do five. Do five, okay. Is that the standard? So actually, let me show you guys this. So when, um, does anyone, did anyone know how to edit? Like when you have a circular pattern to go back because it doesn't show it on the timeline here. You got to find that little mark. Yeah, exactly. So you find the little symbol right here. You just double click on it. It'll open it back up and you can change this to five. Okay. All right. So now we've got our five there. Finish that. And then I'll just take this and extrude this up. Maybe 10 millimeters. And there we have our little hub there. Okay. So now here's the part where it kind of gets interesting because what I want to figure out is so this part here right I'd like to take this shape here and and get this connection to this part over here right um but one thing you can see right like this part here is curved so you don't really have a flat plane for a sketch there and, and then you're going from like one shape to a completely different shape and you've got this transitioning happening, um, you know, which can seem pretty complex, but it's actually um, quite straightforward. So we're going to go back to that sketch here. I'm going to um, use my timeline here, double click to edit, and I'm going to be here in the sketch. Um, so I'm back to editing. And here I'm going to create um, sort of this the shape I'm going for. I'm going to start with the line tool. I'm just going to reference this outer circle. I'm going to click once. And remember how I showed you can go from a line to an arc um, without changing tools. If you just left click and hold, it'll transition right to an arc. And then you can, you can see you can kind of come in and make it parallel. I'm just going to put another line here. Now I can see I got a tangent constraint here and I didn't get one here. So I'm just going to grab it from my um, constraints toolbar click on the tangent constraint and then click on the line and then the arc. Okay, and then I can adjust this. Uh, one dimension I saw he had was a, a dimension between these two, or an angle between these two lines here. Um, and that was set to 25, I believe. And then next I'm gonna use my symmetry constraint here. So I'm gonna click on symmetry. Uh, for actually, I'm going to need a symmetry line first. So let's go ahead and put that in. So L4 line, I'm just going to draw a line straight up here. Uh, make sure I've got a vertical constraint there. And then I'm going to click on it and hit X to make it a construction line. Then I'm going to grab the symmetry constraint. And the way the symmetry constraint works is you click on uh, the one line and then the other line or whatever sketch entity you want to be symmetric. And then your third click will be the line that you want it to be symmetric about, which is going to be here, my center line. And now, now there you go. It's kind of like the mirror tool, but it's after the fact, like after you've made it, you can go ahead and apply the symmetry constraint. So I'll then add a dimension. Let me see if I have that marked here so I can see it. Uh, the dimension for this line. And I'll make that 12. And then the other dimension I had was this arc here. I'll just make that three millimeters in diameter. Can bring this down. Okay, so now I've got this basic shape here. 
okay i'll finish sketch and that's all locked in and now i want to basically i want to have that profile um do either a sweep or a loft to another shape here so okay i guess let me get your feedback what what part would you do next if you're trying to create this like how would you approach that Create a plane at a tangent, I think. Outside, uh, outside the diameter. Okay, yeah. So you say do a tangent plane to this sort of this surface, or as close as you can get to the surface here. Yes. Okay. And then you can do an interpenetration later on, where the shape is here. Then extrude yeah. it through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who else? Yeah, I was going to say, do a plane outside of it and then make sure to the part and then use the part to cut yeah. the excess. And then uh, assuming that's what Trevor said. But I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but then once you get the cut, what would you do with it? Well, then you do a loft, right? So you'd have like a separate body, you mean, or do. Right. Or yeah, you, you would do it as a new body. So then. Are you saying cut a hole through it and then try to loft to the hole? No, I think I, I if you draw a plane tangent to the outside of the uh, wheel mm -hmm. and just draw your oval on there and sweep to that, uh, well, make that something you can sweep to mm -hmm. and sweep it through the wheel to that outside plane. Okay. And then use the wheel to cut it off. Gotcha. Okay. So you sort of like over, over build, you make a plane out here and then you do a sweep through it and you kind of yeah. use this body to cut the rest of it off that you don't need. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get into Trevor and Kayvon's mind, but I think that's what they meant. Yes. <laughs> Those are both very dangerous places. <laughs> get out of our heads. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. I'll show you the, um, so the approach I took here was, uh, I mean, you can do the the tangent plane. I kind of showed that last week. Uh, or you can do like a plane with three points. You've got some options for different ways of creating a plane here. But actually what I did here was I simply went ahead and created a plane on the mid plane here. So in this case, it's the ZX plane. And... I'm going to let's hit P for project. And I'm just going to project the top line here and click OK. And then I'm going to untoggle the bodies here. And then here I came in with an ellipse. So I'll just draw it somewhere out here. And the way the ellipse works, you just you give it a the width and a height. And then I'll come in with dimensions here. So let's say 20 by 12. And then I'll go ahead and align this. So I'll do a vertical constraint between the center of the ellipse and my center point here, and then dimension. And here's another tip I'll mention again, because when you hit D for dimension, you always get, when you select the circle, it always goes to the midpoint. Uh, but let's say I want to dimension this off of the top here of the circle. Uh, what you do is after you hit D for dimension, you right click, and then you can choose pick circle arc tangent. And now when I click the circle here, you see I get a little dot right there up top. Click there. And it'll let me dimension it right to the top of it. So click my dimension, 48 millimeters. Good. Finish the sketch. All right, now I have this sketch, but it's on that mid plane, right? Next <laughs> where I want it here. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to choose modify and I'm going to go to split face and I'm going to go ahead and choose it says what face do you want to split I'm going to choose this face splitting tool is going to be the ellipse I created and it doesn't really matter here if I extend it or not I'll click OK and now I've got you know this ellipse right here um, so here's the cool thing now because when you think of I'm going to try to do a loft and you know you may be thinking or you may not even think of this because you may think okay a loft i may need it to be like a profile on a plane or a surface but the nice thing with the split body you don't need it to be a whole separate body you can use uh or a split face i should say 
Um, and you have to be careful because there is a split body option, which will split the entire body or will break it into two separate bodies. But in this case, all it's doing is just that face. You can see behind here, it's not touching the part. It's just the face here that it's it's throwing the, the sketch on it. Um, so now you can come in, you can actually say, let's do a loft. And if I go ahead and let me untoggle this body here, I can select this surface. And then you can see there how it'll let you select this, even though this is a curved surface, you can still select it and it'll do a loft through it. Now, in this case, it'll go ahead and connect those two and you get that transition happening from this shape to an ellipse. Uh, and if you go here and you change this um, connected to direction, you can kind of do some funky things here. You get this arrow and you can kind of move it up and and it'll change um, how that looks. And also this little widget here that you can do all sorts of weird things with. Um, to be honest, I never really use this much, but it looks like you can create some neat things if you want to experiment with it. But And I'm actually not going to do that because I want to sort of give it more control here. I'm going to tell it the exact path I want it to take. And for that, I'll create a sketch on the center plane here, which is the, the blue-green or ZY. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an intersect to grab. Basically, what I want is the top of the ellipse there to... Um, to be brought into this sketch. So I'm going to go to create, project, include, and I'm going to go to intersect. Now, if I hover here, you can see it'll give me a line just where this, that sketch, that projected face intersects my, my model there, or actually I should say my plane. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom here, this model, and check that. I'm going to go to create, project include and I'll do an intersect and here if I just hover near the top of this arc I'll get that point right in the center there again where it intersects my plane so now that I have those two points that I want let me untoggle body I can come in uh, with the arc tool and basically I just want to connect this point to this point here and the neat thing here is you can really do any shape um, but I'm going to grab my arc tool a three-point arc it'll snap to that first point and I'll snap to the second point and then you know I can go ahead and click the arc I want I could even I can come in and enter a dimension here um maybe 80 millimeter or 80 uh radius of 80 uh finish sketch let's bring those bodies into view here okay now I can bring, so the interesting thing here is right like this, in order for me to see that profile, that's actually a sketch here. So I have to show that. And let me untoggle this hub here so I can see this part. But this section here, that's actually not a sketch. That's just, that's the body, right? It's just the line around the body. So I have to be able to show that. And then I also need to be able to see this line. So now I'm going to try my loft again. So I'll go to create loft. And I'm going to select the profile here. And then I'm going to come up here and select the split face. And all I have to do now, if I click on the plus sign here where it says rails, I can select the path here. And it'll go ahead and follow that. So now I start with this profile and it's going to follow this arc as the rail. And it's, it's just... It, beautiful how it transitions from this shape to the ellipse and it just does it so smooth um, so I'm just gonna click okay oh actually since I wanted to go ahead and join these to be one body I have to make sure that this is actually toggled on so I'm gonna make sure that's on I'll click okay and now you can see everything collapsed into one body and I've got this shape here uh, any questions there so far? Yeah, I, I thought if you want to use this uh, guiding rail, you go with the sweep. So mm -hmm. I thought the loft is like connecting just two surfaces directly. Either way, I mean, it's the same. <laughs> I guess it's not the same, but if you did it with uh, sweep, what would be the difference? So 
the sweep lets you take one profile and it follows a certain path. The loft will actually allow you to go from one shape to a completely different shape. Ah, so you wouldn't be able to do it with the sweep anyway. No, because the, the sweep would just let you do... Let me see. All right, I... okay. Clear. Clear? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So that's the... the... Use loft think... when you want to transition from one shape to another. I think the key that I learned here was splitting the face. I like, mm. yeah, I hadn't thought or encountered that before. That's magic. Nice. Well, that and being able to select a non-planar profile, basically to loft two. I didn't. I didn't realize you could do that. I thought I was thinking like like uh, Trevor and Avon were that you were going to need to you know run that through the body and cut it off, but since and clearly you didn't because you can select that projected or split face as a profile even though it's not flat yeah and, and that's that's kind of one of those things that as I, I was I was watching this when it was kind of like one of those things i i know i know that i know that but because you kind of get stuck so much in like a plane having to you know the profile having to be on a flat plane it almost um like when you see it done you're like wait a minute isn't like that's illegal <laughs> you know you, can, you shouldn't be able to do that but yeah it does work well with the loft um okay and here so i'm looking at this now right and the beautiful thing with fusion is uh i can look at this and say you know what i'd rather just be a little bit bigger i can just go back to that sketch here i believe it's the third sketch there with that ellipse and I can say, you know what, let's make this 30 by maybe 15. Finish sketch, you know, bring that body back in. And we've got a much bigger transition there uh, for this part. So it updates beautifully. And then we can, you know, put in some fillets on here. So uh, I want to do a circular pattern, but it makes sense to do the fillets first, because then you only have to do it once instead of like six times. So F for fillet. I'll select um, here and the bottom here actually does as a separate um, it doesn't it, uh, like a little separate section here so you have to select both of them and I think it has to do with the way like this is sort of broken up here on the bottom when it's doing the loft but it lets you select them separately and then I'll go ahead and do let's go back to the top we'll select this section along with this line and this line here and I'll just enter a one millimeter fillet there. I've got that. And you see it takes it all the way around here to in that bottom section there. Click OK. And now we're going to go to uh, create pattern, circular pattern. And it makes sense here to go with features. If I had done this, done this as a separate body, I could do a body, but then you know, I wouldn't be able to do it together with the fillets. So it made sense just to join them all, do the fillets, and then you can come and pattern uh, the body, you know, this, well, the two features, the extrusion or the loft uh, right here, and then the fillet. And since I did all those fillets together in one feature, I just have to select it once here. Uh, my axis, uh, I could either select a circle, I could do my Z axis here and we'll go with six Make i don't know seven. six seven, or, seven. <laughs> uh, i was gonna ask <laughs> what's the yeah, right yeah. number here here we go okay so we got seven spokes there i'll click okay and that should work with fusion calculate and there we have it so looks like one of the old mini light wheels yeah so the only way to make this, though, is with additive construction, correct? Um, I this, don't know. Would be, this would be yeah. impossible to make uh, by welding it up or by casting it. Or maybe like a five-axis mill? I think you could just do oh. it with a big piece of billet. Yeah, but then you're gonna have, your spokes are going to be solid. Yeah, I want them solid. Oh, no, 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 no. There's... I I can show you a picture of a real wheel. Really? Solid <laughs> real wheel. Yeah, but it's uh, the spokes are the center parts cast. Yeah. But I've seen wheels that have been billet machined out of a complete block. 
Oh yeah, I have too. But they usually don't don't have, they usually don't have circular or pipe type spokes. Right. They wouldn't do this that way. It's just too expensive. Yeah. Do you want to see a picture of a real wheel? Yeah. Let, let's let's see that, and then you can tell me all the parts that it's supposed to be and what they're called and and how it's supposed right. to look. But before, let's do one last thing here, which I, I think it's a nice touch here to come in and add an appearance here. And we'll go with, uh, let's go with metal. And then we're gonna go with chrome. So you can do a chrome here, which looks nice. I like the black chrome, how that looked on there. You get the nice reflections right there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. As far as just the technique, I mean, right, you can apply. Oh, one last thing. Probably should maybe do some fillets over here, a fillet here, and maybe like a, another fillet on the inside so you don't have such a sharp edge there. And then uh, there we go. That's that's the idea. And you can take this technique and apply it, um, you know, to whatever, whatever design. But, uh, I mean, you guys hit on the basic point I wanted to show was that idea that Mm -hmm. you can do a split face and then you can actually select it even though it's not a flat um you know a sketch on a plane um it'll let you fusion will let you select it and then you can go ahead and uh if you just have a line that connects and one thing that's important about that part is um so this line here you have to make sure let me go here that your rail line will actually touch mm -hmm. both points on the two parts you're trying to connect. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. Um, and the other thing um, that I want to show here is that it's, a, it's actually important that, oops, let me bring this back, finish sketch. Uh, it's important that this, loft is actually from the bottom so let me bring that sketch here and that gives you a whole different design here if we kind of look here you see how this transition comes right down to the bottom here because if i was to create that sketch on the top and go you wouldn't have this whole section here you it wouldn't be as strong of a wheel because that loft would just come right to the top surface so I did it first and I was like, why, why is it not working? Why does it look so different? But yeah, um, create that loft from the bottom and then you'll get this section here where it's actually connecting on the top and the side. Uh, oh, any any questions? Uh, yeah, yes, I have. Um, at the mm -hmm. very top of the image at the moment, there's a spare ellipse. Where, where did that come from? Oh, yeah. So good, good question there. That's from doing the um the split face unfortunately it doesn't let you um just do it one side it kind of goes both directions let oh, me see yeah you see how i have to see if there's a way because it takes this and it goes in both ways so you end up with another yeah. section right here i wonder if we just yeah actually it works right well if you just click it and hit delete um fusion just heals it you'll have a little section here and the um timeline so showing you delete the face but yeah there's no option i was looking at this i was like is there a way uh, a long vector and close this point um maybe i'll play around with those but i was trying to see if there's a way where you can just tell it which way which way to go and not get the other, but yeah, maybe closest point would have worked if you didn't have the plane centered in there. Oh yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Because it's it is only one, it is only one face. So it, you know, it extended it both directions. Right. Cause I, yeah, it doesn't give you an option to pick which side of the face cause right. it's a circle, but. If I do closest point, will it, what will it do? Let's see. Fusion breaks. <laughs> Yeah, I just get a I get a warning. Vladimir, could you hollow out those uh, spokes? I, I guess they, they're by default they're solid. I assume, right? Yeah. So these are solid. Could you hollow them out? So the way I would, if I wanted to hollow them out, because this is all one body, 
I would probably come back to right after the loft. Or I would create this loft actually as a new body. Yeah. This may give me some errors down the line. Let me see. And then no, it works okay. And then I would come in here and do a shell. And now I, I can select, let me see, can I do both of these faces and say like a one millimeter shell? Yeah. No, oh, cool. That would, that would take care of it. Um, let's see. Well, so this ends up, let me see what happens if I carry this timeline three. I'll get some errors. And I think the main reason here is probably because this is now, okay, if I did this yeah. as a separate body, it's no longer a feature. I'd have to, um, I can do it still, but my circular pattern would have to be bodies instead of features. As opposed to feature. Okay. Yeah. I change this to body, select the body, click OK. And now these are all hollowed out. Um, and then I'd come in with the fillet afterwards. Yeah. But you'd have to do that on each one individually? Yeah. In this case, you would. Um, what if you hollowed it and then joined it? Yeah, I was thinking that as, as just as you said it. If I do that, uh, let's see, we got the hollow, and then then we do the fillet. Oh, then we join here, so we do a modify combine, combine and do this with this and this. Okay, and then we do the fillet. Yep. So this should work. I would think your existing fillet on the timeline might still work. Oh. Um, not sure if that would work. Why isn't this taking fillet? Hmm. Oh, even this now is giving me issues. Well, so, okay, let me just cancel it. Let's see if, yeah. It doesn't work here, the existing fillet on the timeline, I think, because I changed it. So for that to work, it was part of the feature. With the, yeah. First of all, the circular pattern is looking for feature that's no longer there because I changed it to a new body and it's looking for as part of one body. It's doing some weird things here too. I don't know what that is, but so okay. it's, yeah, this is kind of one of those things like you can change a lot, but once you change some of the rules of how it was designed at the uh, Kind of gives you issues and you'll see you'll find a lot of that with like fillets too we'll come back but let's see if i go back delete the pattern it's not wanting to do this fillet here let me just see if it let me try it one more time here if i do this this and this and do one millimeter fillet it'll take it okay let's try adding this piece here okay it looks like it's working now so that works. Now let me delete whatever this was. Um, yeah, now I can come in with a pattern, so a circular pattern, and then do. Uh, so I should be able to do. I want the loft, the shell, and the fillet, and then axis of rotation is here. And I want seven of those. Click OK. No, there's an error. Mm. You need the combine step too. Uh, I was yeah, I was thinking of that. Do I need the combine? Let's. It's weird that you would, but let's try it. Create um, pattern, circular pattern, the loft, the shell, the combine, and the fillet seven of those cool. mm. nope dean oh. broke it dean what <laughs> keep going dean no i thought it was cave on <laughs> it's going so perfect <laughs> um the, the only thing i could think of is you can try some of these other um all the different compute, compute types. types. Yeah. Different I, compute type. You, you said different I compute we type. Blamed everything on Ed, by the way. That was no, it's, my, it's my wife's fault usually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try optimize, see if that works. And then although I'm not selecting the combine, 
Uh, What's it doing? I'm looking at the oh, there you go. Look at that. No, I did it. So yeah, that's usually the like when you have trouble sometimes with uh, circular patterns, just try the different compute types. So it was set to adjust, I believe, and then I went to optimize, and then that worked. Um, I don't really don't know what the difference in math that it does, but sometimes it's one works and another one doesn't. But yeah, so that's compute option in where was that compute option? If you go right here um, on your circular, start in the pattern. Okay, yeah, right so that's where you'll see it in, in the pattern. Okay, yeah, it's just this little drop down. You're uh, off the hook now, Dean. Section, yeah, <laughs> section analysis here. Let's do. Uh, to see, see our hollowed out um, spokes here. Oh, oh, uh, what? What's, what's going on? on? Oh, that is weird. It's not, but it's still here. Is it? The shell feature is still there. Oh, that is strange. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go back to before this, and then let's do an inspect section analysis right here. And it's it's shelled out there. It's hollow here. Did you not pattern the shell? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, it's selected to be patterned. Huh, I'm confused. Let's try identical as a compute option and see if that does anything different. No. That gives an error. It gives an error. It's all here. Um, but it works now. Well, that's the original one. What about the other ones? Yeah. So oh, know. yeah, you're right. It does it does that one, but it makes the other ones whole. Uh, that Dean. <laughs> you're almost off the hook, Dean. Oh, that is weird. Why wouldn't it? It'd be a just slight balance problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyone think of something I'm not thinking about right here? Why would it? Why would it do the first one <laughs> pattern? It's not applying the shell. Hmm. Let's go back I'm still trying to figure out the logic why you wouldn't want to include the combined because I, by leaving that out, I would think it would make separate bodies for each one of those because it's not, it's not a, it's not a feature being used. So why isn't it creating six other bodies for the spokes that aren't combined yet uh let's try it we'll add this to the list click okay now we got something where is it getting these others from <laughs> well let's do a section analysis and see it if included that... the split face and pattern that or something that's weird or it's trying to do eight because nobody in their right mind would do seven. Uh, oh, look, Ed was right. No, we solved one problem. So, Ed, we chose we chose the combine, like you said, and now they're all shelled. Yeah, I still don't get why it works. I mean, or why it didn't create all. Well, and look, it created all these extra bodies. Yeah, but you, you solved this one problem, but now we have another. Now you, gotta, now you just got to do another join step, it looks like. Um, always something. Okay, so we have all these separate bodies, but what I'm not understanding too here now is we've got these split faces all here. I think the circular the fillets are there. Those. The circular pattern created those when it. So the fillets are there. Are they part of the spoke body? Yeah, they were selected. Yeah, because those were selected. So the fillet here is selected to be patterned. We have the combined the fillet and then I have the no body. idea how that worked because. Oh, you selected the whole body. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but everything is, is rotating because the holes are lost now. Oh, maybe that's why. Because when you is it because when you click the combine, it's selecting that body, that entire body, and so it's it's oh, so it's taking that for it to work, it's taking the whole body and doing a pattern out of the body as well. I think that 
that's right. why and then so you have so it's also taking that phase yeah. let's see if we do a combine after that of everything into one so we'll do one body and see if that fixes it oh yeah look it fixes it it gets rid of all of them except the one here but this is our original we can just delete that yeah but you lost the, the, the holes <laughs> huh lost your holes uh, <laughs> I lost my holes. Why did my well wow, man? This is not good. What happened to my holes? All this to avoid doing the manual filleting. That's weird. Let's check. Um so the other thing I was wondering when you were doing this earlier, if you, no shell, so if you did way. the shell and didn't do the fillet, so and then did a circular pattern and had seven unfilleted spokes. And then if you fill it, then joined, then combined them into one body, and then do a fillet on one of them, and then do a circular pattern just on the fillet, would it? Oh, yeah, I see what it, you're saying. Would it, then you wouldn't have to repeat it on every spoke. Yeah. But with that, I don't even know if that would work either, because Fusion might get confused about joining that properly. I don't know. I think that uh, that would be probably the next thing I I would try here. Let me see really quick. If I let's undo. <laughs> so where are we now? We've got our. We, holes need, we need a Chat GPT interface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's undo the pattern here. We'll do one more thing. We'll undo the pattern and we'll undo the fillet. I want to make sure that we're still shelled here. So let's do a section analysis right here. Okay, we still have our shell. Okay, so now we have and take off the combine, combine as well. Combine, yeah. Think. Take off the combine, and now so let's pattern this by itself as a body. Circular pattern of this as a body, and our axis of rotation. We got seven. Okay, and now Ed, you're saying do a combine and then do a fillet and then yeah, combine. combine combine one yeah combine them and then do a fillet on one of them and then do a pattern then pattern that fillet okay so now i've got one body here um i just i want to keep checking i want to make sure i don't lose the the shell that's there okay we're good and then i'll do a fillet here so i'll do it here select these And then this top, and let's grab the bottom there. And then the one millimeter fillet. Click OK. OK, and then we'll go to Create, Pattern, Circular Pattern. And this time, we're going to go back to Features, and we're just going to choose the fillet and choose our axis here. Click OK. Yay! <laughs> and then Smoke. We're not there okay. yet. Oh, there we go. Good. There we go. So that works. And just to confirm, we have our shelled spokes. So we are good. Okay, we got there. And this is bothering me, so I'll delete it. All right, guys, that was a that was a fun trip, but <laughs> but we arrived. <laughs> That's good. You know what? I you think it actually. Think... What was that? You guys are geniuses. <laughs> yeah, that, that was more fun than... Uh... Should, should you have shelled that center puck? Because I noticed there's still some material. You know, you, you <clears throat> the spokes are shelled, but there seems to be some material on the inside of the puck. If you do a section analysis. A section analysis. Yeah, see how there's... The, <clears throat> the puck kind of comes up in into that i'm just wondering if the puck were also shelled along with the uh oh you're talking about this section here yeah this little that little bit That's in there ah. i'm just wondering if that was causing some problems because you kind of have a shelled spoke going into a solid puck or hub or whatever you call it i'm just wondering if you should have shelled that center portion at about the same thickness of the as you did with the spokes hmm but would you want to shell out? I wouldn't want it mounted on my car. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> ride with that wheel. 
Yeah, the other thing you could do is, I mean, after making this and making a solid, maybe doing a, a cut. So this is all one body. And then when you do a shell, I would just select from here up so that this part isn't shell. So this is solid. But it also depend on how you were going to manufacture it. If you're going to weld those onto that block, you'd want that all there. Yeah, because that's how it would end up going together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, good. You know what? It's also, I think, I mean, I'm glad we went this way because usually I'd say it's best practice to save your fillets for last anyway. Because mm -hmm. um, you can see, I mean, just from this examples, it can cause all sorts of troubles when you try to do them first. And it kind of makes your design easier to work with, I think, if you just kind of save it for last. Because then trying to calculate fillets when you're trying to make parametric changes um, can can wreak havoc. So, um, so that the approach we took at the end there, and I think that that's actually the better approach um, for any design is to just save those fillets for last, and then do one and pattern them separately. Like, don't try to pattern fillets with other features. I think that's just asking for trouble. So did you pattern those fillets as a body or as a feature? As a feature, but here they're just, I did one and then just patterned the rest. And that as a feature, out. okay. As a feature, yeah. Does one calculate faster or better than the other, a feature or a body? Well, you can't, if the fillet can't be its own body. Um, so it has to be a fillet body. to another body, yeah. Okay. So it has to be a feature. It has, all right. Yeah, you could possibly do faces, but I try to avoid that. Like when you do pattern, you have another option here for faces. And you can go ahead and select the face, but then you'd be multiple selections because I'd have to select this face, these two faces, and then two faces up here. So it wouldn't be efficient anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. So let me stop that share here. Um, the there question, you have no, how okay, would you print that? So how would you print that is the question. How would I print this? Let's see. So on the next one, carefully. Yeah, on the next one. <laughs> exactly. With no color change, right. right. Um, I could. You know what? I think if you print it like this and just do supports on the center part, you'd be okay. You know, maybe even like your own supports if you want, and it's something that can break away. That would print fine like that. Because I think these. I mean, you've got enough of an arc there it'll be okay you know and some printers maybe a little rough on the bottom here but you I mean you can do supports here where it starts to get a little bit shallow if you want but um i wouldn't print it like this i don't think i mean you can with some supports here but that might get you into more trouble what do you guys think i'd it'd be a candidate for tree supports for me right two point six Yep. Like this wait. position, like this with tree. Right. Yep. Yeah. We'll wait for two point six to come out. There we go. Cool. Um. All right, Larry. You want to show us what a real wheel looks like? You're mute. Is that coming through? Yep. So I actually have these wheels. Isn't that the one I just designed? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, this, I want you to, I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite an elaborate profile on the wheel itself. All right. the, um, first of all, to get the bead to seat right. And then there's a, uh, a smaller diameter ridge in here. So you can actually get the tire on there. So mm. you shove the bead down in this ridge, which allows you to pop it over the other side. Gotcha. Because the beads don't expand. They won't get bigger. You can't stretch it on there very much. Mm. And this one happens to be a two-piece wheel. I don't know if you can see this seam right here. Mm -hmm. They do the outer piece separate, and then they weld in this center piece, which is, I don't know how the outer rim is formed. Mm. Um, they're aluminum, so I guess they're machined. And then the center piece is actually cast. Mm. You can also see the spokes go towards the middle of the wheel to give it strength. Um, and usually the lug nuts are between the spokes, not inside the spokes. This is just a hubcap. Gotcha. Now, do they always go to the middle of the wheel? or Because some of those pictures looks like they were more out, like the end of the spokes. Um, or do they always like, did they curve up and then back in and always attach at the middle of the wheel? 
Um, this one, this design has sort of a, a hump shape, yes. Mm. Um, there are other wheels that are more like the one you did. Um, I think some of the Foos wheels look similar to what you drew, but the hub is completely different here. Mm. Wow. It's interesting. I just had uh, four tires changed on, on a car that I'm borrowing. So when we get our new car, anyway, I had to put uh, all new tires on it and I was watching the guy do it years ago when I was doing this, you'd have to flip the tire over to put the tire on or the whole wheel. The machine he had, it put it on the one rim then sucked it down and put it on the same rim so that it all fit down onto the yeah. tire. And it was quite interesting the way they did it. Now, is that profile the same for every wheel or do they change with different? Um... Well, there's designs all over the map, but um, um, I mean, there are thousands of different custom wheel designs and they yeah. just keep increasing. And depending yes. upon the design, they cut it out of a piece of billet and then other designs like this one, they make two pieces and weld them together. And the reason they weld them together, they actually want to change the uh, uh, the offset. So the wheel the wheel sets in relation to the hub. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they want to move the 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 face that gets bolted on closer to one edge or the other. So I mean, I'm talking about this where the tire is going to sit here. Is this always like what you showed? Is that the same, or are there? Well, you've got the inset where you can probably stick the bead down on one side. You probably need a bigger ridge on the outside for the uh, for the bead. Yeah, but the, the, there isn't one sort of standard like design for this. Kind profile. of, it's more of a uh, it's, it's more of a channel in the middle and then the rest of it is flat <clears throat> the wheels then, that i had for this pickup that i'm using i bought a set of tires on rims that were for a nissan um xterra and i went to put them on because they're six lug wheels and i went to put the xterra wheels on the chevy pickup and they wouldn't fit they had this much overhang or a not enough clearance between the wheel and the caliper. Mm -hmm. So I had to discard those wheels and put the old wheels back on. Gotcha. The bolt, patterns, the bolt patterns for wheels are all over the map. Um, mm. The most common one is five bolts, but, this, but the diameter of the circle that the bolts are on is all over the map. And some small cars had four, four studs instead of five. And a lot of trucks and heavier vehicles have six. And some of the some of the old Chevrolets have eight. Yeah. Interesting. And on some of the Mopars, the threads are left hand thread on the left hand side. <laughs> All right. Really screws mechanics up. <laughs> Try to change a tire at the end of the side of the road, you can't get the nuts off. Or or you're using an impact and you break the studs up. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into show and tell. Enough wheel talk. Um, I just want to say real quick, I enjoyed learning about wheels. That was awesome. And a, and a really good, really good lesson. You know, several ideas I hadn't thought of. So thank you. Good, and thank and you. if you if you want to do something with horses, be prepared because I'll be letting you know. <laughs> okay. All right. And Vladimir, I just wanted to find out, does John want to borrow my vehicle and switch out the tires for me and then give it back to me? Is that, can I get on a list? That might You'll have to bring them to Alaska, though. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. A little far away. <laughs>